Good morning and welcome to worship. It is so good to see all of your faces. I know there's smiles behind those masks because I can see it in your smiling eyes. It's good to be with you today. My motto for the last several weeks has been one day at a time. And the one uh, joy that I found out of uh, being able to say that repeatedly is it causes me to pause and be reminded that this is the day in which the Lord has made. So one day at a time helps us see that the Lord is here and present with us each and every day. I am grateful that you are here in worship with this morning. We have a very busy worship service this morning, all full of delightful and good uh, parts of our worship to God. Uh, first and foremost, we come together with our prayers. We lift our voices in song and we hear God's word for us. We also have a baptism this morning. We'll be celebrating the baptism of Caden James Plath. Um, he is the son of Levi and Jessica Plath, and their sponsors for the sponsors for Caden are Brad and Tiffany Katiter. Yes, I got that right. Um, I would like to share with you, Levi and Jessica have been uh, worshiping with us for probably a year and a half, two years, I think, yeah. Uh, but, you know, may not have been had an opportunity to get to know many of you, mainly because of the pandemic. It was prior to, I think it was the fall of 2019, um, met them and got to know them. We're planning to have them become new members in the spring of 2020, and unfortunately, those plans were changed because of the pandemic but they continued to, we stayed in touch, they worshiped with us online, and in the meantime, Caden came into the picture. So we are delighted that we are welcoming not only Caden in to the family of Christ, but also welcoming Levi and Jessica as members of our congregation, even though they have been unofficial members for quite some time now. But we are glad that we get to have them be here in person with all of us. We also have baptisms later today at 5 o'clock tonight. So in the last three weeks, um, including the baptisms this evening, I will have done nine baptisms in three weeks. Wonderful. As a pastor, it is a joy. Um, so tonight we'll be welcoming Bentley Scott, uh, Anna Lee Rose, Hudson Neal, and Kira May, and uh, Bre um, let's see, Bentley and Anna Lee um, are the children of Nicole Nelson and David Beach, Bradley Loomis. No, I said, yeah. It's David Beach, Nicole Nelson, and Bradley Loomis, and then uh, Anna Lee is the daughter of Nicole Nelson and Bradley Loomis. Hudson and Kira are the children of Craig Nelson Nope, I'm, I'm getting my lines messed up here. Let me read this again here. Son of Cody and Natalie um, for both uh, Kira and Hudson. So I welcome them to be with us tonight, and I also know that you as a congregation will welcome and surround them with your prayers and support as well. We come with our prayers, and our prayers are lifted up to God, spoken out loud and shared with one another, but also silently on our hearts. This morning, we lift up in prayer Nancy Runnigan. She had back surgery last week, is home, is recovering. Um, I saw Dave come in, so if you'd like a, an up-to-date uh, check-in with him, but I do know that things are going well, and she appreciates our prayers. We also lift up in prayer Gene Lundeck. He has had some chronic pain this week and has been in and out of the hospital, um, but it sounds as though uh, there's some uh, looking forward, looking up in terms of his care and his well-being as well. And then we hold in prayer Delaney Erickson. She uh, fractured her collarbone uh, this past week as well, so we are gonna hold her in our prayers uh, for her healing. Our flowers here that were given in the sanctuary are given from my family as a gift back to the congregation for your compassion, uh, as well as your care to me and to my whole family after the death of my dad. His funeral was this past Wednesday here at Cross of Christ. And so once again, I personally thank you for, for the prayers, for the love, the support uh, in many, many ways. And so I'm grateful for that. We have continued prayers for those battling coronavirus, for those battling cancers, for healing and for wholeness, whether it be your deep loss, your heartbreak, your broken bones, broken jobs, 
broken relationships, it's in our grief, worry, and our thanksgiving that we pray. You will have uh, hopefully saw an offering plate as you came into worship this morning. I invite you to place your gifts of offering in the plate, either as you're leaving or uh, continue to welcome you to drop them off in the church office, mail them in, um, as well as electronic giving. We continue to have uh, an opportunity to give electronically through a text message even. 507-260-0765 is a secure and safe way to give directly to the congregation for our mission and ministry. So thank you for your spirited generosity. We'll be celebrating Holy Communion this morning, and we will be continuing to disperse uh, communion or distribute communion in our traditional form. So I invite you to uh, be come forward as the usher uh, escorts or invites you forward. There's hand sanitizer up front here. Um, you may remove your mask as you receive communion, um, and uh, I will be wearing mine just out of precaution as well. But we want you to receive God's bread and body and blood as a gift because this is Jesus's meal. If you're not able to come forward or not comfortable coming forward for communion, please let the usher know and I'd be happy to bring communion to you in your space. And I do have a hymn number note here for our hymn of the day, Canticle of the Turning. The bulletin has the number is 612. It actually should be 723. So the hymn of the day is 723, Canticle of the Turning. The words are printed in your bulletin, though, as well. So there are many other uh, things I invite you to take a look at in the bulletin, as well as the echoes and whispers. Certainly, if you have any questions, please uh, contact the church office for more information as to how you might be able to be part of mission and ministry here at Cross of Christ. But today, now, we center our hearts and minds as we come together in worship. And I invite you to stand as you're able for a call to worship that you can find printed in your bulletin. Children of God, do you love the God who hovered over the face of the deep and called the worlds into being? Yes, we know that we do. Then feed God's children. Children of God, do you love the God who was revealed in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Yes, we know that we do. Then take care of God's children. Children of God, do you love the God who breathes new life into us even as we gather this day? Then feed God's children. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please join with me in singing our gathering song, All Depends on Our Possessing, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2. It's number 589 in the hymnal. I invite the congregation to be seated, and at this time, I'm going to invite Caden to come forward with his parents, Levi and Jessica, and his sponsors, Brad and Tiffany. If you would like to follow along, you can follow along in the order of the baptismal service on page 227 of the hymnal.
So God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. It's by the water and the word God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Christ. We are united with all baptized into one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And so now I turn to Levi and Jessica, and I ask you, you have been called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God. Do you desire to have Caden baptized into Christ? If so, respond, I do. And so as you bring Caden to receive the gift of baptism, you're also entrusted with some responsibilities. Now, as new parents, you know there's lots of responsibilities. These are very different than those. And the main thing that we remember by these responsibilities is the partnership we have with God and that we have with us here at the congregation. Those responsibilities are to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, to nurture him in faith and prayer, so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God has made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Cain grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, respond, I do. And so now I turn to Caden's sponsors, Tiffany and Brad. Do you promise to nurture Caden in the Christian faith as you're empowered by God's Spirit to help him live in the covenant of the baptism and in the communion with the church? If so, respond, I do. I do. Congregation, I ask all of you gathered here in person as well as those online, do you promise to support Caden? Pray for him in his new life in Christ. If so, respond, we do. And now I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the face of the church. So first, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, respond, I renounce them. And then I ask you, along with the whole congregation, as we profess our faith, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Thank you. And so we continue now with our water prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel into sl from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live a new life in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Well done. <laughs> done. I always tease the sponsors that if they finish on amen, they get a cookie in heaven. I have no idea if that's really true or not, but we like to think that those kind of things are waiting for us. So well done, Tiffany. All right, Kate and James, why don't you come in nice and close so that you can feel these waters of that Christ is welcoming you and washing and making you clean. Kate and James, you are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here we go. I got his hair all wet there. 
It's nicely combed. I'm just going to let you hold on to that. Stay nice and close here with me. You belong to Christ in whom you've been baptized. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Caden with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Caden, James, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us all together as a congregation welcome Kate and James, our newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And so before we begin with our baptismal uh, song here, I do want to give you a couple items here from the congregation. First is this lovely blanket that has been prepared. It has his name and his date of his baptism on there, so it's not only a reminder of our care and compassion for Caden and your family, but God's love uh, wrapping not only Caden, but all of you together and knowing that God is with you. As well as we have um, a spark child's Bible here. So if you don't necessarily have a Bible that you've already given to Caden, this is a wonderful beginning with its pictures and its words and its stories of God's love for us, as well as the certificates and a medallion. And then um, as soon as we blow out the candle, there's the box for that. So I will give you that, Jessica. But now I invite the congregation to join with me in singing our baptismal hymn, Borning Cry. It can be found in the hymnal. Actually, I think the words are in the bulletin as well, but number 732. And we'll sing verses 1. Let me see here. I know that was changed as well. 1, 3, and 4. Thank you for helping me out there. Please join with me in singing Borning Cry.
I invite you to rise as you're able as we continue with our confession and forgiveness that you can find printed in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the mission of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Congregation may be seated for our first reading. Good morning, I am Janelle Lemke. Our first reading is from the 31st chapter of Genesis, beginning at verse 44. Come now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. And Jacob said to his kinsfolk, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there by the heap. Laban said, this heap is a witness between you and me today. Therefore he called it Galead and the pillar Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. If you ill-treat my daughters, or if you take wives in addition to my daughters, though no one else is with us, remember that God is witness between you and me. Word of God, word of life. Please join me in reading in unison of Psalm 145, beginning with the first verse. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. I invite the congregation to rise as you're able for our gospel reading. Our gospel comes from the book of John, 21st chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. The Holy Gospel according to John. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, 
tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, them, follow me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Congregation may be seated. Oh, yes, we do. We have some kids here this morning. Are you willing to come up and join me here this morning? I see the coolest as kids. I have a book that I want to share with you. It's a pretty simple story. Not even a story. It's just a message that we can share. Yes, there's Natalie and her bunny. Thank you. We actually have a bunny in my story. Come on up. Come sit down. So the story is, I love you, little one. Look at, there's a bunny right on the cover. <laughs> yep. Tootsie Roll, right? Yes, I wanted to remember the name. So this is a wonderful story of reminding us the simplicity of love. But yet, is it really that simple? Okay, so let's hear what we hear in this story. Deep in the woods by the sandy river bank, a little deer asks, do you love me, mama? And mama dear says, yes, little one, I love you as the river loves you, full and singing before you, giving you cool water to drink. I love you as the river loves you, forever and ever and always. Deep in the woods, by the mossy pond edge, a little duck asks, do you love me, mama? And mama duck says, yes, little one, I love you as the pond loves you, wide and calm beneath you, giving you food and places to swim. I love you as the pond loves you forever and ever and always. Deep in the woods in a dirt dug burrow, a little rabbit asks, do you love me, mama? And mama rabbit says, yes, little one, I love you as the earth loves you, cozy and snug around you giving you a warm place to sleep. I love you as the earth loves you forever and ever and always. Deep in the woods in a grassy meadow, a little mouse asks, do you love me, mama? And mama mouse says, yes, little one, I love you as the wild rye loves you, gently swaying above you, giving you food and cover from harm. I love you as the wild rye loves you forever and ever and always. Deep in the woods in a dark mountain cave, a little bear asks, do you love me, mama? And mama bear says, yes, little one, I love you as the mountain loves you, sturdy and safe around you, giving you shelter from the snow and the rain. I love you as the mountain loves you, forever and ever and always. Deep in the woods, an oak tree hollow, a little owl asks, do you love me, mama? And the mama owl says, yes, little one, I love you as the oak tree loves you, tall and strong beside you, giving you the world to see all around. I love you as the oak tree loves you, forever and ever and always. Deep in the woods in a log-built house, a little child asks, do you love me, mama? And mama says, yes, little one, I love you as the stars love you, constant and bright above you, giving you joy and peace and wonder. I love you as the stars love you forever and ever and always. So even though this is a pretty simple story, the love is shown in some pretty powerful ways, right? The protection, the care, the constant. We can see it all around us in the people we're with, in God's creation. And I look here just at 
Tootsie Roll feeling safe and secure in your arms. And that's exactly how God wants us to feel. And it's how I want each and every one of you to feel when you're feeling lonely or sad or like nobody loves me. God says, you are mine. When I marked on Caden's forehead that cross, you also received that very same cross on your forehead. And even though we can't see it today, God knows it's there. And God says, I love you forever and ever and always. And it doesn't mean just when we're here in this building, it can be wherever we are, in whatever form that we feel comfort, compassion, care, love, kindness, all of those things that God gives us the ability to know from someone else and to also to share with someone else. So before you sit back down, can we say a prayer together? Boys and girls, let's fold our hands. And I want everybody to repeat after me. This is a prayer we're saying together. Gracious God, we thank you for your heartwarming simplicity of love. because we know your love is grand and is with us forever and ever and always. Help us share that same love with all of your creatures in all of your creation. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, you guys, for coming up and being with me. I forgot to bring up my little um, activity pages for you to take with you as well. And Natalie, I'm so glad I get to see Tootsie Roll again. (laughs) What a sweet bunny. Comes to church and is just very content to be in your arms. Thank you, boys and girls. So I need to ask you, if you've read or heard anything about of the retired man in California named Lawn Chair Larry. Sound familiar at all? Well, it goes back a few years. Back in 1982, Lawn Chair Larry began to tie helium-filled balloons to his lawn chair. He wanted to take a ride. And after he tied a few balloons to his chair, he started to lift off the ground. So he called his neighbors in nice and close to help hold down the chair. But then he continued to tie on even more balloons. 20, 30, 40 helium-filled balloons. While the neighbors were still holding the chair, the man strapped himself and told them, let go. And the lawn chair, now dubbed Inspiration One, the flying machine, it consisted of just that, an ordinary patio chair with 45 helium-filled weather balloons attached to it. Larry rose into the air to an altitude of over 15,000 feet, and he floated from his point of origin in San Pedro, California, now into controlled airspace near the Long Beach Airport. As you can imagine, his flight was widely reported. He only expected to float up maybe 100 feet, and he had brought a pellet gun to pop the balloon so that he would come gently back down. But when, he let, when they let go, the chair sho- soared up with the man in it, the 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet, right on above the houses and the trees, all the way out of sight. It's reported that an air controller received a report from an airline. This is Captain Jones, Flight 411. I'd like to report that I've just passed a man in a lawn chair at 3,000 feet. 
Now, the man eventually came down safely, and reporters asked him, why did you do such a thing? He gave a really great answer. He said, you have to do something. So I think this is God's desire for us. God desires, that is, that we trust God is with us and that we, got, we trust that God is for us and thereby live with courage and hope, even taking chances, risking ourselves in relationships, and seeking the welfare of individuals and community all around us. All the while remembering that even when we overlook God's presence, God is always there, sometimes encouraging us to overcome our fears, sometimes sending us out ahead, sometimes reaching out to grab us, to hold us in forgiveness, comfort, and grace. Jesus' words of assurance and promise may not make a transition in our life less difficult, but the words do give us hope in the midst of change. Jesus' words lift the heavy weight of the finality that's often felt when someone says goodbye. Edward White wrote the book Saying Goodbye, and he says this, Often it is in the transitions of life that are the greatest occasions for growth. In addition to appreciating what we are leaving and what we are moving to, we can learn many secrets of the Spirit by monitoring the experience of the transition itself. We can discover new things about ourselves and about God who is with us in the transition. Now, it is my hope that we discover some amazing things about ourselves and God upon my departure from Cross of Christ to be a chaplain at Eagle Crest Communities. Almost immediately, we'll begin to discover that I'm no longer able to relate to you in the same way that I've previously been able to relate to you as a pastor. When I was daily active and present in the congregational's life and Sunday worship, after today, I won't be able to provide pastoral care or talk about church business, preach, teach, or serve as a member. Nor will I be able to answer questions about confirmation or help our present church leaders discern ministry issues that they are facing. After working so closely, with this congregation in that capacity for the last five years, shifting out of that role will be difficult for both of us. As I pack my office and I stand in this pulpit one last time, sometimes we're pulled into something new before we trust what has already been accomplished. If these walls and these pews could talk, I have felt your sweat and heard your cries. I've even watched you steal a nap or two. This is where we have tried and failed and found hope again and again. This is where you have collected yourself and you received the very words and meal of forgiveness, grace, that washes you with fresh hope. It has both been hard and good to love you, people of God, and to answer this call in this particular place. Though I came as an outsider, it's now clear that I absolutely belonged. I know you have been well loved by my words and my presence. I have wondered often if I was enough and I know I was. I have hoped that you felt blessed, and I know that you do, because you have told me and shown me. I go forth with gratitude and a peaceful mind. I invite you to love and care for your future pastors. It will be your best affirmation that my ministry with you was appreciated and was enough. 
It has been my main prayer in this ministry to deepen your commitment to Jesus Christ, his church, his mission, and to know that each and every one of you belong. To live this out will be the best tribute to me and my ministry here. It's about pushing past complacency and passiveness so that the church universal, God's ambassador for love, can continually grow and be the ever-stretching hands, feet, arms, legs, heart, body of Christ in the world to do the things God intends for us to do. We now must open our eyes and see change, no matter how painful or difficult at times, is absolutely a new beginning rather than an ending. Remember that the next time you are asked by Jesus whether you love him. When you are caught in a confusion and hurt, you're afraid of the question and the uncertainty of the next step, Remember what Jesus says. Feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. Follow me. Dear friends, believe this. When you put your trust in Christ, even when faith fails, Jesus doesn't. His hand is always there for you. In recent weeks, I've seen the traces of God be with you glimmer through various ways that the members, you, have shared your goodbyes with me. Some are tearful and heartfelt conversations to emails and cards and words of affirmation. It's in those simple and powerful acts of goodbye that remind me of the wondrous presence of God in our lives over the past years. Those glimmering traces of God's presence have made me a better person, a better neighbor, a better daughter, a better mother, a better spouse, a better pastor, and a better follower of Christ. Those glimmering traces of God's presence have shaped and will continue to shape all of us in a loving and passionate way that God calls each and every one of us to be. I do believe the glimmering traces of God's presence will forever connect us and forever illuminate the separate paths we travel to do the work of Christ. God be with you. And farewell. For this I say thanks be to God. Amen. Please join with me in singing our hymn of the day. It's in the bulletin. <laughs>
And we continue with our prayers of intercession. I invite the congregation to rise as you're able. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near the Holy One in prayer, responding to each petition with the words that echoes today's psalm. The Lord is near. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us to overcome our hesitations that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy, the Lord is near. God of cooperation, we pray for the communities of the world embroiled in conflict. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to the disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children, who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy, the Lord is near. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness and chronic pain. Help them find appropriate care. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. And hear our cries for who we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy, the Lord is near. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today. Shine your grace on all the saints. Lord, in your mercy, the Lord is near. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Allow me to take a moment for our generosity pause. You are part of God's 100% beloved community, and you have the gifts to share with others. We are never too young or too old to put our faith in action. God is abundant in love, allowing us to be abundant in our gifts back to God. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue at this time with Holy Communion. And the church is anywhere where people are gathered in Jesus' name. Holy Communion is a special meal we celebrate when we worship and all are welcomed to this table. The bread and wine, they are mysteriously the real presence of Jesus Christ. And we trust that Jesus is really with us in this meal. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it for all there, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. When we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Congregation may be seated and our communion servers can come forward at this time.
I invite you to stand for our prayer after communion. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us with the love of the world, with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we take a moment for a thanksgiving of the conclusion of my call. And I'm going to invite Eileen to come and join me up here. Pastor Linda McPeak, on August 21st, 2016, we of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church called you to be pastor in this place, to proclaim God's word, to baptize and teach, to announce God's forgiveness and to preside at the Lord's table. With the gospel, you have comforted us in times of sickness and trouble and at the death of our loved ones, sharing our joys and sorrows you and your family have been important to our life together in the Church of Jesus Christ, in our service to this community, and in God's mission to the whole world. As you leave this community of faith, we say farewell and we pray for God's blessing. People of God, members of Cross of Christ, do you release Linda McPeak from service as your pastor? Please respond with, we do and we give thanks to God for our ministry together. We do and we give thanks to God for our ministry together. Linda, do you recognize and accept the completion of your ministry with Cross of Christ? I do, and I give thanks to God for our ministry together. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. You equip your people with abilities that differ according to the grace given to them, and you call them to various avenues of service. We give you thanks for the ministry of Pastor Linda among the people of God in this place. You watch over our going out and our coming in. Bless this time of ending and beginning. You surround your people in every time and place. Keep us close in your love. You accompany your people in times of joy and times of trial. Prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Heal and forgive all that has fallen short of your will for us. Help Linda and her family and all of us to live with courage and gladness in the future you give to us. As they have been a blessing to us, so now send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So besides baptisms, I also enjoy blessing you. So now hear your sending blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Join with me in singing our sending song, number 536, God be with you till we meet again.
go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.